Kandinsky painted Rigid et Corbet, rigid and curved, in December 1935, just two years after he'd moved to Paris. He'd previously been at the Bauhaus in Germany, which had been closed down by the Nazis in 1933. So he and his wife moved to Paris and set up home in Neuilly. Kandinsky found when he arrived in Paris that it shared a light with Moscow. Even on a cloudy day, the light was rich. And this picture marks the commencement of some of the great ambitious paintings of his final years. The works of the Bauhaus period were often very geometric in concern and fierce in their formal structure. This painting shows a new departure. On the left-hand side, of course, we have this rigid structure mentioned in the title. It's crystalline, it's sharp, it's, it's dramatic. Its shape, of course, is reminiscent of the Fasquez, the symbol of the fascist movement. Whereas the right-hand side of the painting, the bulk of the painting, is occupied by these wonderful curvilinear forms that ascend upwards towards the top right. Kandinsky brings into the works references to scientific study, amoeba-like forms, crustaceans, all of which point to the breadth of his learning and his sense of wanting to make a work of art that was inclusive, that had great scope and that it would have a spiritual dimension. There is also, of course, in its Baroque form, its interlocking of various elements, a sense of a narrative being told, a story within this painting. Music, of course, was of paramount significance to Kandinsky. There are musical references, these forms which replicate a bass clef, perhaps. But also, the crescent could represent the horns of a bull. It's been suggested that this picture might be a representation of the Greek mythic tale of the rape of Europa where Jove, the chief of the gods of Olympus, disguised himself as a beautiful white bull in order to capture the Phoenician princess Europa. And Jove took Europa on his back across the Mediterranean from Phoenicia to Crete to form the Minoan royal line. It's a story which has occupied artists throughout the centuries, but in this moment, in the mid-1930s, there are other examples. Max Beckman treats the theme. Picasso's great Minotauro Maquis, which was completed just months after this painting, also takes from the Rape of Europa story. The story represented the idea of breaking free from the political situation of the day. He had led this migratory existence. His most recent stop in Germany, of course. Previously, he'd left Russia after the revolution. One of the revelations of the early Paris pictures and represented nowhere else better than in the present work is Kandinsky's use of sand. It's used to scintillate the surface. Rigid and Curved was bought from the artist by Solomon Guggenheim in 1936. Guggenheim had visited Kandinsky in Paris and obviously alighted on this as one of the masterpieces of his years. It was subsequently sold by the Guggenheim Foundation in their great sale in 1964 of some 50 works from the collection, where it was acquired by the family of the present owner.